season nine of the Real Housewives of Potomac is here. No Robin, no Candace. We head in with a little bit of a shakeup. How are you feeling about the new dynamic at play stepping into the season? Stepping into the season, I was like, what is this going to look like? After the first two cast interactions, I was like, I know what this is going to look like. What did it look like? Um, it was different. It was like new energy. It was different personalities that I have not even encountered in my own personal life. I was intrigued. I was left with questions. But overall, it was fun. It was really fun. I had fun this season. All right, so you stepped out of the season being like, this worked. I stepped out of the season saying, this worked for me. <laughs> Okay, there are what, seven, eight other people who maybe have a different answer. I think people will miss seeing you and Candace get up to your hijinks. How did you feel about not having her there and have you been able to kind of keep in touch with her off TV friends? It's interesting. Um, she reached out to me recently and she, she asked for recommendations for breast pumps because, you know, <laughs> When I was on the show, one thing she always says is that my breast pump was so loud and it would like <laughs> lull her to sleep. Just like, girl, what breast pump is this? So I, I was able to share that with her. And you know, motherhood is my favorite journey in life. It's amazing. It changes you. And so, you know, I, I definitely want her to have that, enjoy that. Because as you can see from my own babies, Cameron was three months when I started this show. And to see how big she has become, that time flies by so fast. So enjoy it. It's one in a million, have at it. Yeah, Cameron now telling you she does not like your wigs. Yes, she <laughs> is. I cannot believe it. I'm like, are you serious? Do you know how much I pay for this? She doesn't care. And when I told her that, she was like, well, get your money back. So yeah, time flies, okay? Hey, financially <laughs> responsible queen. She's only five. At, at five years old, absolutely. Do you have any contact at all with Robin? Now I'm Bryce. That's now the I'm answer Bryce. I was expecting. <laughs> when the trailer dropped though, a lot of attention paid to you and Giselle. Oh. People are confused about this friendship. Cheers. Cheers. I'm here for the girlfriend session. We have come a long way. We were in hell. True tea. Set the scene for me. What do we step into with the two of you and where does it build from there? You don't step into that. You know, it's so interesting to me how a 90 second trailer can get people talking which is a good thing. We want people talking, absolutely. But that's not where it started. And I'm really excited for viewers to see the journey and to see the progression and to see whom extended the olive branch. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh it's gonna throw you for a little loop a little bit. I love where we are. Wendy, who would you I'll Giselle. So what do you say to people who maybe even at the end of the day, after they watch the whole journey, are still gonna be like, Wendy always wanted Giselle's approval. This is so fake and phony. What's your message to that crop of people? I don't have a message to them because that means that they wanted to think that anyway. If you can watch this season with the evidence laid out in front of you to see that's actually not what happened, then I think that you just want the situation to be a certain type of way. Furthermore, from my understanding, you know, it's it, it, this is something that reflects natural friendships, right? And if you are at odds with anyone, you have conversations and you decide whether you move forward or not. And I also will ask people to go back to season five when I came on. We were once friends. I remember there was a time when Giselle outside the cameras invited me to her 50th birthday party and I was in attendance at her 50th birthday party. So I say all that to say is that yes, we have issues. We definitely had huge issues, but baby, you have to have conversations. There has to be accountability. Things have to happen. And then you move from there. Can you share, what is it about Giselle in this new incarnation that you enjoy? Because oh, Lord. so tense right. so long. Well, I'll tell you, I still don't enjoy her fashion. So we could just leave it there, okay? <laughs> oh, that's the thing that's gonna get you in trouble. <laughs> oh, it's getting in trouble. <laughs> 
Well, big life change for you this season. You resign from your teaching position. Mm-hmm. How has life been? I mean, did you have FOMO as the school year started this fall and you're not there for it? You know, it's interesting because I did. And, and it was particularly for the institution I was working at. I have been there for so long. I know their policies, the procedures. It just became natural to me, but I wanted to challenge myself. I gave myself the summer off. Um, I haven't had a summer off from teaching in years and it felt so good just to travel and be with my family. So, you know, even though it was a hard decision, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the time off, absolutely. What has leaving teaching opened the door for you? otherwise uh spoiler alert more teaching oh <laughs> but 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 you guys have to wait for it but isn't the way is is different it's completely different i just want to do it you know is it frank sinatra that says i did it my way yeah yeah i i did it my way yeah that's my that's my theme for this year of my life i'm doing it my way how did susan feel about you doing it your way yeah she thought it was the dumbest thing ever <laughs> Has she been around since she's had the months to marinate on it? Uh, I don't know. I think we need to give her a few more months. Maybe I'll sweeten her up around the holiday season or something. But yeah, she's she's not a fan. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, Kareem Jean Pierre. Welcome to the White House. We do see you expanding the show this season <laughs> all the way to the white house what does well, it mean to bring that conversation not only to your youtube channel but to the show we went all the way to 1600 pennsylvania avenue baby i mean what a moment for me what a moment for my show it was only the second season and you know what really stuck out to me was the conversation was initiated by the White House. And to me, that is a testament to me often feeling in my career that I'm not where I want to be, or I haven't done anything, or I'm not worthy of X, Y, and Z. And I think that that's something that a lot of us struggle with. We feel like we have imposter syndrome. And in that moment, I realized, you know, you may not necessarily be where you picture yourself in your head, but you are making progressive steps and that's to be applauded. So Dr. Wendy Show season two comes back to YouTube in October. I'm so excited for you guys to see all the guests and I'm just happy. I'm really in a place of happiness this season, Bryce. I can yeah. see it on you. You're radiating. Aww. And yeah. it is it is one of those things where you can feel like the person who's always asking and asking and asking. And when somebody finally asks you, mm. it can flip the perspective on its head. And that's it. That's it. You also had a big birthday while yeah. filming this season. Yes. This is a symbol of how I want my 40th to be. Loving those who love on you, no hard feelings. What are you claiming for your life beyond happiness in this next decade? This might sound odd, but I'm claiming ownership. I feel like I've lived so much of my life for other people, whether that's my mom, Susan, whether that's for my children, whether that's for the students in which I've committed so much of my professional life to. I feel like in this season of my life, in this 40th year, I want ownership and agency over Wendy. And I want Wendy to put herself first. And if I'm happy, I've realized that that will make the people around me happy as well. So, you know, I'm just taking the reins back on my own life and being in control. I love to see it. <laughs> We've got some newbies in the mix this year. How did you feel about your girl Kiarna snagging a flute? Baby, my girl came and okay. <laughs> I am so happy for her. She is deserving of it. You know, I, I'm so excited for you guys to get to know her more, get to see more of her personal life, her business, her entrepreneurial spirit. I just think she's such a great addition. She adds a level of like fierceness, but also just sisterhood to the group. And I think that that's an amazing addition. Who kind of slid into the group the best? We have Kiana, we have Stacy, and we have Jazzy. Well, that's not fair because Kiana was here last year. So I feel like hers was like a little bit easier because- step up. 
Yeah, because because she just had to do a little doop. But um, <laughs> out of the other two, I would definitely say Stacy. I think Stacy because she did it her way. She to me is the wild card because her personality is so different, but so different in a good way. And I think that by mid season, you guys are gonna be like. Now, Stacy, like I think that that's gonna be the response mid season. You guys are gonna be very intrigued. Well, from the trailer, mm -hmm. she, it looks like there's a big spoon in her hand, and she's sitting in the middle of the pot <laughs> on this. So. <laughs> She is, she is. Karen made it very clear. Wendy was self-absorbed. What? You know, I think she's like a cross between, and I hate comparing housewives, but like, I feel like she's a cross between Mary Crosby and Katie. Oh, that <laughs> paints a picture. And that's all I'll say on that. Who would you say is the potster of the season? Is it Stacy or does somebody else? No, I, I think the pot, I think that goes to Jacqueline. Oh, okay. Also back in the mix this time. <laughs> yes, also back in the mix. And she doesn't do it in the shadow. She is very vocal this season. I like Jacqueline. I really do. We see her step right up to the plate in premiere episode, I believe. Um, yes. Some comments about Karen, so. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Speaking of Karen, we see the two of you appear to hit a rough patch mm. after Stacy claims that Karen called you self-absorbed. Mm. I have always held you down, off yeah. and on camera. I would have respected that from you. What happened there between you and Karen, and where are you at right now? You guys have to stay tuned for that, um, because that's probably something we have to discuss at the reunion. But you know, I like Karen. I'm here to support her. I'm, I'm here to, you know, to be here for her during what she's going through right now. Um, all I ask of my friends is to be the same friend to me that I am to you. I'll ask you, do you believe that Karen used that term to describe you? Oh, Bryce, we gotta wait till the reunion. You have to wait till the reunion. Why are we talking about reunion? The show hasn't even aired. <laughs> You're the one who brought up reunion. I'm asking about the trailer. You have to wait. You have to wait. You have to wait. It, it is a bit of a tough re-entry for Karen because cameras went up about a month after she made headlines with a DUI. Is it Potomac to be a drunk crash your car into trees? I am so sorry you heard the crash. I could have died. Or taken the life of someone else. How do you feel she handled that? It's a tough walk to walk, I think. I think that it is a very tough walk to walk. And I I believe that, you know, you have to navigate it the way you know how to best. So I think that from some, some viewers, they may like the way she responded to it, but you know, everyone has their own opinion and others may be like, they don't like it, but it's Karen's story and it's Karen's story to tell. And as her friend, all I can do is support her and stick by her side. Another trailer moment, there's a little something between you and Ashley. Okay. What are your feelings about Ashley in season nine? Ciao. Ashley is the same messy Ashley. Okay. So it is what it is. Nothing has changed with that one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> well, what's changed is everyone's gone blonde this year in the new opening. <laughs> Except for me. I don't know what's wrong with them. I feel like they're competing. I, I really think it's a side, you know how you have like silent auctions? It's a silent competition. And I just don't get it. I don't understand what's happening here. I don't. <laughs> it's I a don't. bond off. I think there was a moment in, in season nine when Mia walked into the scene and I was like, okay, Mia Targaryen, like what is happening? Like you were giving Game of Thrones and I'm not understanding. If they do this at the reunion, I, I may just have to grab Andy's seat and give them a lecture because I don't understand why these choices are being made. Class will be in session that day. As always. <laughs> what would be your word to describe season nine? You said fun and happy. Yeah. Is there something to, to join those two? Refresh. It's, 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 let's, let's give this a go again, but with a clean slate. And that's what I would tell viewers. I would tell viewers to come back, watch season nine, do it with a fresh pair of eyes for all of the ladies. And I bet you 
you will love it. Is there anything we need to brace for impact for? Oh, hell yes. And it was not in the trailer. And they knew what they were doing because that right there is going to blow your wig off. There is something that happens this season that everyone is going to grab their chairs and be like, oh. because when it happened, we all grabbed our chairs and in real time we're like, oh. and it sort of becomes a thing and it's crazy. I literally have chills talking about it. It's crazy. It's nothing you will expect. And man, shout out to the truly original team for not including that because they're probably like, oh, we're just gonna give you guys this fresh new start and you guys just enjoy and they're gonna hit you guys so hard. You're gonna literally feel like the wind got knocked out of you. It's pretty bad. And it involves, uh, two people on the cast, but it's definitely a... You give me one name that we should keep an eye on. No. <laughs> this is not my first day on the job. <laughs> no, I want you guys to get the wind knocked out of you the same way I did. And I don't want you guys to anticipate it, but just know it is something that you guys are gonna be like, oh my God. Yeah. Well, I cannot think of a better note to leave this interview on than that <laughs> Because that, I got to go process some information about Wendy. Please process. <laughs> Please process. <laughs>